Hi friends and fellow flute enthusiasts, thanks for tuning in to Johnny's Flute Reviews. I'm Johnny Lipford and since 2002 I've dedicated myself to everything flute. I teach, perform, and record full time with the Native American flute. I post videos here on YouTube covering flute tips, tutorials, original songs, and cover songs to showcase how versatile the Native American flute is. If you're new here and interested in becoming a more emotive flute player, or you just love listening to the sounds of the Native American flute, be sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified every time a new video drops. Now, let's dive into a flute from my personal collection. Welcome back. In this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews, we're going to be looking at a flute made by Rick Switzer of Rain Spirit Flutes. So this is a relatively new flute in my collection. I got this at Sweetgrass Flute and Nature Festival back in September uh, of 2019. Uh, this is a flute in the key of D minor. Uh, it's a smaller flute, as you can see. Um, the block is made from, I believe, mahogany, and it's got a couple of turquoise rings here on it. Um, Rick does a really great job and um, I had a couple of flutes that I needed to every once in a while what ends up happening is I'll retire a flute from uh, my travels from recording and performing and not that the flute has worn out I don't think that's true um, I take good care of my flutes but I think my preference changes um, Preference is a word that's coming up a lot for me lately as I work with students and so Where you're at now is will be is different than where you will be uh, By preference and what by, by preference. I mean like what you prefer in the flute back pressure tonality responsiveness um, So a lot of these things change with where we are in music and what we're doing to uh, Express ourselves through our music and our flute playing and so um, I was in the market for some higher range flutes that were sweet sounding, not shrill, um, not high and piercing, but um, that were high range, but kind of mellow and soft and just sweet. And I can push them when I need to and lay off of them uh, as I need as well. So I wandered into Rick's booth and guess what? I came out with a flute and um, another one on order. <laughs> you know how it goes. So this one's made from poplar, if I didn't say that already. So uh, this is a great, um, a nice wood for this key of flute. Again, this is gonna be dry. There's no reverb added, so you get to hear it exactly as it sounds. So really great responsive flute. It fits my need, it fits my preference. Um, if you haven't already checked out Rick's flutes, um, he makes a wide variety of uh, keys um, and he does really, really great work. Uh, I'm happy to add this one to my collection. I know there's a lot of recording that I'll be doing with this particular flute. So I'm interested if you have one of Rick's flutes, drop it in the comment below or if you're looking to add one of his flutes. I will add a link to uh, Rick's website uh, where you can check out some of his flutes in the description below. You'll also find some links for um, resources that will help you grow in your flute journey and uh, help you become a more emotive flute player. So keep an eye out. Uh, those links do change every once in a while. We're adding new programs. We're offering new things. Uh, to help flute players. Uh, that's my goal, um, is to help you become a more emotive flute player, um, just as um, I have been on that uh, journey and pursuing that um, art of playing for a while. 
So anyway, uh, be sure you subscribe too so you can stay updated on flute reviews, flute tips, tutorials, original songs and cover songs, and gear reviews as we look at um, a lot of different elements around the Native American flute. I really appreciate you sticking in and tuning in to um, this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews. I hope to see you in the next one.